Now, um, just as a bit of an addendum to the roof series of tutorials, um, I wanted to uh, had a thought that I wanted to describe something else here, and to demonstrate it, I've just created another series of walls. We'll have a look at what they look like in floor plan. So that's these series of walls in floor plan, just an L-shaped building, and I'll go to the roof level, and I've just created two gabled roofs here, the gables on the top and the bottom end two gable grooves right side by side on each other. So the elevation view that I was looking at, to describe that to you, this elevation view, these are the gable grooves running into each other. So this would obviously require some sort of a box gutter arrangement for this to work. Now, I want that um, uh, um, aspect to stay in this building, but I want to avoid having to have the box gutter. So I wanted to describe something else to you in view of this. Um, it's going to start off with something similar like we started the series of the tutorials, that is one roof uh, cutting through another and trimming the roofs back. So we'll start on that. And what I intend to do is run another ridge line in between these two slopes running sideways. This ridge line will run through here and, and then run those roofs down uh, which will which will form a valley into these two roofs and what I intend to do is keep this ridge line fairly low and then what you could do in terms of just your color selections you could uh, make this roof down here almost fade into the background with a blue sky roof color or a light gray roof color or something like that whereas these two front gables would be picked up and uh, by doing that uh, you, could, you could create the illusion of these two uh, gabled roofs running down into each other, yet avoid having to have a box gutter. So, let me show you what I mean through there. I've got these two roofs here. I'll just describe to you by editing the footprint what they are. So they're simply the roof outlines there. Now, I did use the pick wall command for this one, just here. That was on the pick wall. And uh, this one was pick wall also. That way it should get my heights correct for... Uh, the roof to pitch on top of the top plate of the walls. This one had a 600 millimeter overhang and this one was right on that outside surface of the wall. Okay, and then these ones are the ones that were defining the slope and I used the slope of 25 degrees and 25 degrees. And then the front and back ones obviously have no slope being defined. There's, no, there's not a defining slope on those, which means this will be a gabled roof. Tick that one off and just show you then what this one looks like. It looks like the same. So I've just used that same exact line so the roofs will be hard up against each other. And that one has defining a slope of 25 degrees and it was pick walls. And this one was pick walls also and it's got a defining slope of 25 degrees. And these ones were just offset a little bit, 300 millimetres I think I used, and there's no defining slope on those. So that's what those roofs are like. Now I'm going to do another roof now to run a ridge in the other direction. So I'll just make sure, yes, I am on my roof level, and I'll go into the roof command, roof by footprint command. Just make sure that my base offset is back down at zero, and I'm just going to create a rectangular shape, um, bigger than I think it needs to be. So it's, it's just going to run some direction like that. Now, these are the slopes. These ones here, I'll just take the slope off, don't define the slope and don't define the slope. And that way I'm going to have the ridge running in this sideways direction through the middle of these two roofs here. Uh, I'll set the roof pitch. Oh, look, I'll set the roof pitch initially to 25 degrees, but I'll probably change that as we go, but just so the roof at the moment matches the other roof. So if I tick that off, and we have a look in this elevation view, what that's done for us, there's the new roof that's gone in. Okay, so, and I can just double check that I've got the levels right and everything. If I zoom into, say, one of these points here, you can see that the, this intersection here is going to be the all-important intersection. Make sure that all the top surface of the roofs intersect at that point. So I just want to have a look now at lowering that roof pitch to get the desired effect. What I really wanted, I can select the roof and come over to the properties here, and I'm going to pick something like 10 degrees and apply that. So there's, there's my 10 degrees being applied. So I can imagine now this would be the little ridge that I want to keep in here. And obviously I've made this roof too long. I need to cut it back from that. 
So we'll do the same process that we did before, good revision. So I'll go back, I'll, I'll, while I'm here, I'll leave a reference plane in at this all important intersection that I'm trying to capture. Oh, it said midpoint, I just better make sure that that is an intersection. I'll go SI for snap to the intersection. I'll make sure I did get an intersection there. And do another one again, SI snap to the intersection. There and leave another one. So I've got these reference planes now, I'll just make sure they do show up at roof level, and there they are. Okay. In actual fact, what I intend to do now, now that I've found I've got a, an angle of um, 10 degrees works for me, uh, what I'll do first of all, uh, that did look right again, I'll just double check that again from the elevation view. Yeah, the 10 degrees looks like the effect that I want to achieve, but the, because the 10 degrees has changed, the geometry of the uh, sloping uh, vertical cut of the roof has changed a little bit, so this is not um, matching properly. So I'm just going to select that roof and move it so the top surfaces of the roof, where all the roof plumbing uh, uh, um, valleys will come into the one point and everything, all the geometry should work at that point. So that means my little reference planes aren't quite in the right spot, so I'll move them to snap to intersection. Load intersection there and this other one. And move that. So I snap to intersection if I can't get it. Yep. Okay, right. So I know 10 degrees is giving me the desired effect and the roof would be at the right height to be that 10 degrees. So I'm going to go back to my roof level plan here now. And what I'm going to do is re-edit this roof, uh, that one there. So I'll edit that roof, edit that footprint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just drawing some lines now. Oh, I've lost my ridge line, but it will be. I'll just put a temporary line to find that ridge line back again. There it is, through the, through the middle. So midpoint to midpoint would be where the ridge line is. And what I'm going to now do is draw some line, series of lines without defining any slope. And I'm going to um, go from where the roofs join each other up to that intersection of that ridge. And then back down again to where the roofs join each other, that's the intersection of the ridge. And I'm basically just forming this diamond shape which will be the shape of what the roof that I really want. Because, yes, I know, and these will be the valleys that will form now between the 10 degree ridge running here, running those ways, and then the 25 degree ridge here, running down, down that way, will form those valleys. So I'll just take all of the other lines off that was defining the original roof shape. This line here was just a temporary one, defined so I could get, could get the um, uh, centre ridge. And that now is the shape of the roof that I'm after. Now the only trouble is, by deleting all of those lines that was making up the original roof slopes, I've now got no roof slopes happening. So I need to create some roof slopes, but I've, I've deleted the line that the roof slope needs to come off perpendicular to. So to do that, I'll introduce you to the slope arrow. So I'll click on the slope arrow, and I'll click on this end point here, and make my slope arrow go in this direction. Now in my particular case, it doesn't need to go up to the ridge, because I'm going to define the slope in a minute. But, you know, it, it might as well go to that point, which is, is the ridge anyway, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to put another slope arrow in, going from this point, up in that direction also. So I've got these two slope arrows. Now what I can do with the slope arrow, if I select the slope arrow, it's got some properties. And I can specify the height at the tail and the level at the tail. I can specify the level at the tail with an offset and the level at the head, at the head with an offset. Or I can change this slope arrow to define a slope. 
So I'm going to specify define a slope. I'll leave the level of the tail default with an offset of zero, and then I'll just change the slope to the 10 degrees that I had already previously worked out was giving me the desired effect. So I'll do the same for the other one. Select this slope arrow down the bottom here now, and change that to define a slope, and make the slope 10 degrees. Okay, so checking both of those, if I control click to select them both together, they're both defining a slope and they're both defining a slope of 10 degrees. So I'm hoping now that if I click tick and have a look at what that looks like now in the elevation view, that's what we've achieved. And the heights have stayed correct if I select them. So we've got this little piece of infill roof with the ridge running in the other direction. I can clean up my reference panes now. I won't need them anymore, I don't think. Oh, I might just leave them for the moment, actually, because there's another step that I have to do. We'll have a look at that quickly in 3D view, and that was what I was trying to achieve. So by putting this lower-pitched roof in between these two gables, it can avoid the necessity to have a box gutter in that situation. Uh, I'm still going to have, there's still going to be a pretty tricky uh, outlet of a downpipe at this point because there's going to be a lot of water coming at just that one point through this valley through here. But uh, that would be another exercise to sort of come up with the correct, um, the correct water flow management and, uh, and detail for that downpipe and, and rain head at that particular point. But in terms of the roof geometry, this is satisfying what I wanted very nicely. Now, the only thing is now, I need uh, to, to be correct, this roof here at the moment, if I just hide this one temporarily with my sunglasses down here, you can see I've still got all this roof surface which wouldn't actually get built. So, uh, let's reset that. So what I'm going to do now is edit these two roof shapes. I'll do that from the roof level. So here's this roof shape here, and I'll edit the footprint of it, and I still need to once again define this roof slope. I'm going to have a little bit of a problem in this situation, but I'll, I'll explain to you what I'm going to do there in a second. I'm actually going to, um, well, I'll go pick lines. Use my pick line tool. I don't want it to define the slope, and I'm going to cut this roof out that shape. So if I was simply to delete that line there now, that is the shape of the roof that I want at that point. Um, the trouble is, though, there's no slope in this direction, pointing in that direction. And um, if I did place a slope arrow directly on this intersection here, the slope arrow would line up with that boundary, and Revit, I don't think, would like that. So to overcome that, what I, what I will do, I'll just turn thin lines on here for the moment, onto a thin lines arrangement. And I'm just going to draw a little line, uh, and I'm going to make it define a slope. Um, well, actually, I already had a line in the right place, so I'll just control Z, I'll just go undo, until I get this line back, which was at the right slope, at the right height, and everything like that. And I'll use the, uh, the split command. So I'll just use the split, or SL is the shortcut key. And I'll, ju I'll just split this in two places, once there and once there, so that I can get rid of the middle piece. I've now got a 25 degree slope still there and a 25 degree slope still there. So I want to keep that slope, and the best way I think I know of doing that is if I make that line a very short length. You know, it'll even one millimetre would work. So a tiny one millimetre length of line there. I need to really zoom up hard here to find that one millimetre length of line. And I'm just going to draw another little line without defining slope out to here. And I'll just trim. Oh, it's telling me the line is too short on the screen, so that just means I have to zoom in a bit more, I think. If it doesn't work, I'll have to go to something slightly more than one millimetre. Yeah, it doesn't like the one mil... Oh, okay, because it's less than one millimetre. That's one millimetre, so this would be even less. So 
Let, let's try and make that instead of one millimeter. I'll try two millimeters. Just make it a little bit bigger, and then I'll draw another little line from there to there. No, it's still too short, so I'll try 2.5 millimeters. Eventually, I'll get a size that will work. Revit doesn't like very, very short lines. So I'll just, yeah, that one will work, and then I'll trim that up. So I've got a 2.5 millimeter little line there, but the important thing is I've still got this 25 degrees starting from this point, and all these other lines are not defining a slope. So I'll just do the same on the other side. Make this, we found out we could only go to 2.5 millimeters. Close that off. This line is not defining a slope. And trim. I'm just using the trim tool. Here we trim. So I'll just turn my thin lines back on. So, to all intents and purposes, two and a half millimeters in the scale of the building is very, very tiny. It's not going to affect the accuracy uh, very much. It would be an insignificant amount. But I think this will still achieve. The result that I'm after. So if I just tick that off there and do that, you can see how now I have created this cutout in the roof that follows all of that geometry there. I'll just uh, demonstrate that by hiding that element there. So if I just quickly do the same for the other roof, I'll show you the effect. So I've just done the other roof here now, um, this roof. Uh, it actually didn't need to have that little 2.5 millimeter treatment. And the reason for that one is because this roof still had this piece of uh, line on this side with the 25 degrees um, defined on it. Um, so that's why that didn't need to happen because that set the slope coming from that direction up there. So that's the effect that we got. And if I go back down to my sunglasses and reset, yeah, you can, you can see that that was what I wanted to achieve there. I wanted these gables coming in through here, which, um, you know, I left it as 10 degrees, but if you wanted to even accentuate that look even more um, uh, of the gables, you could reduce this roof pitch down to 5 degrees, depending on, uh, or as, as shallow as you wanted to go, depending on the, uh, obviously, the capacity of the roofing profile to take the, the low low pitch. Um, so so that was the effect that I was after there. Um, so I'll just leave the, the, the roof tutorials there at that point. Um, and uh, if I think of anything else, I'll come back and add to the series at some later stage.